face. I'm turquoise. This is my mother, Jan Janice, and my sister, Janice. <laughs> I almost said Janice. And, okay. Um, and we've been gone for what, like two weeks? It's been a long time. It was uh, paying our respects to our cousin and um, mm -hmm. James Jones, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. there, and DMX. Um, but we took last weekend off because we attended our my cousin and my mom's nephew mm -hmm. um, funeral. So that's topic. There, our topics are the murder of 15 year old Micaiah Bryant, the charges that was brought up against Derek Chevin. How do you say it? Okay. I don't care to say it pro mm -hmm. correctly anyway. He does not deserve my respect. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, much more. So let's go ahead and get started on our first topic. So 15 year old Micaiah Bryant, um, I was listening to the radio when, when I first heard about it and it stated that she was being bullied by a group of girls. She called the cops and then during the um, fight, the cops showed up and they, you know, shot her, they killed her. And then reading a few more articles, it was said that um, the girls were her foster sisters. She actually tried to kill one of them because she had a knife pulled out on one of them. And um, what are your thoughts about that? My thoughts about that is the police could have used a stun gun. She, my understanding, she was trying to defend herself. But if she was at the house, she was wrong. They were at her house. Oh yeah, yeah. I've had a knife too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a lot of, please excuse me, you guys, because I'm going to be very long-winded. I got a lot. Can I get my first? Please. <laughs> I'm going to be very long-winded. Let me give my point first. Okay, so I just want to say, number one, I'm, I'm torn about this. Number one, because they could have used a taser to taser. And number two, it seems like someone was going to get hurt or die because she was going to stab another young lady. So a wrong woman, but still. Yeah. Um. So for me, it's like, I'm, I'm torn. She didn't deserve to die. They definitely could have tased her, but would the taser have been too late? The other young lady would have no. got, you no. know, stabbed and, you know, died potentially. No. Um, and then also, she was apparently being bullied. And sometimes you just get fed up. Mm -hmm. And the, you can't, and she's only 15. So there's only so much you can handle as an adult, just not to be 15 years old and try to handle everything. So. That was just her, her, her breaking point. So yeah, all I can say is I'm torn about that. Well, <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna be very long-winded because I have a lot to say about this because I watched the entire video of what happened. And yes, granted, I understand that these were grown women coming to fight a 15-year-old about her not respecting the foster mother's house. Yeah, and they teacher. were outside. This is my issue about the video. The issue that I have about the video, or why I think the cop did what the cop did, was because in the video, you just see a bunch of people outside standing around. The cop pulls up, it's just a bunch of people standing around. This girl comes out. Somebody wielding on the ground. First. No, that wasn't her on the ground. She was the one standing up with a knife, about to jab the girl in the pink. She was about to stab a girl in the pink. She was, it looked like the bigger one. Yeah, what it was, it was a grown ass man that knocked that girl down. She was, the girl on the ground was one of them people that came to the house fucking with the 15 year old. And the, there was a grown ass man that kicked her while she was down. And while the other girl, the girl, Makai Bryant, who got killed, she was going to, you know, stab the girl in the pink. The girl in the pink had a Yorkie dog in her hand. Dropped the dog and jumped on the car because the girl's coming at her knife and that's, at the point where she was shot. Yes, the cop could have used other means. Yes, black girls don't get as much outrage as black men do. Yes, it is wrong what happened to this girl, but the failure here was every adult involved around this girl failed her. Every adult around her failed her, from the mom to the foster mom. They. And, and this seems to be a common thing in the black community. We love, like, you gonna go fight. You gonna go fight. You know, we're, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. This is how this situation happened. And this girl 
called the cops because she knew she couldn't handle these grown ass people by herself. But little did she know, I wish that she were able to calm herself down enough mm -hmm. to see that the cops were there and to not, that you know, so come out there swinging. But me. she came out there swinging at the time that the cop was there. And you, looking from the cop's perspective, he don't know none of this stuff is going on. He doesn't know none of this is happening. So all he sees is somebody is about to stab somebody. So he goes and shoots. Or he could have did a warning shot. He could have did a warning no shot. shot in the air he not at but, her. But cops are trained to when they see what they think is a life threatening thing to shoot to kill. And keep in mind That's that not always right. The, it's not always mm -hmm. right. But remember, even was that I believe it was here that a 15 year old stabbed a 13 year old in a fight, and the mom was with them. They went to the, with uh, like to the mall in a parking lot with a knife and stabbed and killed the child. That could have very well been this situation. That could have been this way. But granted, this girl did not deserve to die. This girl, given the situation at hand, everybody around her failed her. Her parents failed her. The foster parents Absolutely. failed her. Everybody and failed her. I, I don't think that this is a, even though it is police brutality, he could have used other means to subdue her. Kids in school fight with weapons and knives and scissors That's and stuff all the time. Right? Earlier, like you never like she was going through a lot but there was no way of the officer that shot her of him knowing that he just see you know and then the 911 call says somebody was had a knife and was trying to stab people and when he comes on scene what does he so see did she somebody make the 911 call? they say it was her How, they say it was she her. made the 911 call since my trying to stab her with a knife why would she go out there with the knife that's what i'm that saying might be a little that's suspicious. what i'm saying was it her or was that it might the be wrong people? But, but this is what I'm like, you, if, as an officer you get a call saying somebody trying to stab somebody, it's a big ass fight. And you literally come on the scene and somebody is trying to stab somebody. Shot. But you don't, they're not trained that way. Well, it's it's, and then you know, especially you trying to stop they killing should. everybody they, they see. They should, but us as black there's people, other ways that you can handle it. I bet you that's that's true. all that situation was white. Nobody wouldn't have died. That that's true, and we and we can argue those points. But the fact of the matter is, is we as black people know that we're not treated the same. They look at us always as a threat. We should never be involved in police in these matters, and we also should not be continuing to allow this thing on. This seems to be rampant about sending these kids to go fight with other kids or uh, going to people's houses and Don't trying to fight. Don't go to nobody's house, nobody house trying to fight. Kill. That that's, that is like asking and for something horrible to happen. Another thing is this, like, with us being black, we don't deserve protection. So it's not that we don't deserve it. We know we don't got it. We know we don't got it. That's what my point is. It's like, you call 911 because you need protection. But then you're not protected. You're perceived there as the threat. Because, yes. So for me, it's like, damn, you, you just can't win. And then you fight against, against your own people, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So we just got everything against us. But we can change that because we, we look at ourselves and change ourselves. Yeah, yeah that's what change. I'm saying. We should not it's, be it's really allowing this stuff community. to happen. And, and you know what is funny is that that always used to be the case in the black community. Parents would go to parents like, hey, your kid is going to do it now. You know, they nowadays you can't. The they, 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 protect, they, protect, protect they protect the bullies these days. It's true. The, the bully is protected these days. That is so true. But this all could have been avoided. This girl was failed by literally every single one around her, including the system of police. But I don't think police shooting her was just, you know, a result of just racism or something like that. He came, he got a call about a, somebody stabbing somebody, he saw somebody stabbing somebody and shot. I don't think the cop did that to be malicious. He would have shot her whether she I still had a Don't shoot us. You know, don't look for any reason. It's not going to happen. I'm not looking for them to be The people that are That's outraged. Because it's not gonna happen. him killing her, well, shooting her, which resulted in her death, is justifiable, basically. Is. Because she had a weapon. Because she had a weapon and she was going for somebody else. It's, it doesn't make it right, but that's what it is. It don't mean it's right. It don't mean it's right. I feel so bad for this child. I, and she was a beautiful girl. And did anybody beautiful ever, girl. like, did anybody try to 
talk her out of it. You know what I mean? Like, at some point. They was enabling it with the grown man out there kicking the girl that was on the ground. They were enabling it. That's what I'm saying about everybody around this girl failed her. They wanted the melee. They wanted the fight. They weren't trying to break it up. They weren't trying to and that's, de-escalate and that's the situation. black people, period, to be honest. When the fight happens, what's the first thing a black person do? Nobody tries to break up a fight. They Everybody stand around in. and watch the fight. Or join, they watch or join in. So, to me, it's kind of like, we have to start with ourselves. we got to change ourselves. Exactly. We need to change yeah. that in our community. We need to change that. You got to stop it. Anyways, yeah, I, I I just feel like there's so much about that situation. And uh, Anthony stated, um, left a comment and said, who would get a warning shot, the girl would have got stabbed. But it also may have redirected the young lady. It may have shocked her to where she would looked around and had a chance not to, you know, attack her. Like, you never know. The warning. But if she was in a blind rage, the girl would have got stabbed. Saying, so if the warrant, if the if anybody hear anything, especially a gunshot, it may prompt you to stop just for a second. Somebody could have probably tackled her. You never know because nobody's in a situation but that young lady and whoever else was involved. So for me, I still would have said a war, a warning shot, like because she wasn't coming after him. I mean, you could have warned after the other person. And so with him. I and then the girl may have, the shot. girl may have got uh, slapped. So like you, but no, she the girl, wouldn't have you died. Know. From yeah, it, right? you never know. It, it may have, you know, Tristan like, oh, what's that? And then somebody could attack with her, or whatever. You just never know. It wouldn't have hurt to try. And to then he shot like four but it's times. All, yeah, he did. It was you excessive know, to shoot her four times. Yeah, but I mean, it's always shoot. If you had to shoot her, why you just didn't shoot her once so she could stop? If we just shot her in her leg, that would have hurt her and but she, she would have survived. But she would have survived. Uh, they, I don't know why cops aren't trained. Because right? they aren't trained to because they don't want to. If you know, they're trained, to, if they use their weapon, they need to shoot them. You know what's crazy? That's not the way they used to train them. You know what's crazy is, and I always mention my, my job, but even when, when we have mat training, you know, we don't go around work with tasers and guns and mace. They have you, they literally have you, not even tackle people, you can't take people to the ground. They literally have you do these weird ass mat moves to where you stop people from doing this fight. It could have been other, he could have been made. Yeah, sure. well see been. that's when people talk about not necessarily defund the police, but train them better. That's what or they say. Allocate those funds to mm -hmm. other resources. And like train people them that, better. People that not work in uh, your uh, business. People that work in your business that can de-escalate somebody yeah. having a mental breakdown. Like that's what people mean when they but say. But I tell you what, even the people that's handicapped in your business, if the police get called, they will shoot them too. They will. They don't the, care that they handle uh, that. Uh, there are a high percentage of the people killed by cops as people. I'm just saying the way we're trained, Although we're not officers, but we deal with a lot of escalated situations, violent situations. Y'all see us walking around with guns and mace. They can train them better. And school teachers don't either. Kids yeah. come in there with weapons and knives and scissors and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's true, there's ways, but if you look at that particular situation, that is not going to be nothing that they're going to charge that cop for because he literally. Well, he needs to go back to China. But oh, that wasn't not going to put him in jail. Well, he, he needs went to go to trainer. another trainer. No, that's how they train them. Is I'm what telling I'm you, Nisi, back before they were killing all the black people, they didn't train you to just shoot. They, they are trained to shoot center mass if they perceive a threat of somebody towards by them the body or, or anybody else. Okay, I'm done with that. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying. That's what it is. I still stand with. I'm torn, but I feel like he could have did a warning shot. Of course, like he there's always more that would not have killed her. Of course, he could have shot her four times. I'd have stopped her from trying yeah. to stab the lady because she'd have been hit and she'd have been trying to grab onto herself. But you, we also and uh, consider was, that this is a child, even though she looked like a grown woman in the video. This is a child. Yeah, and then what well, was also said is they was the ones bullying her. Right. So they, you know, they was losing a the fight. They thought what they deserved, but she didn't deserve to die. No. They came over there messing with her. 
No, she didn't deserve to die. I don't think that. And then just imagine her background, like being in foster care. It's hard enough because you're already like your parents. That's don't what love I'm saying. You. Everybody, you know, like it's, it's a lot and of most stuff that most foster parents play. only get you because of your money. Yeah, there's a lot of things that go into play. Like I always was taught that aggression is the is the last feeling. It's everything that stems from that. Like you're, you know, being emotional, not being, not feeling like you're being um, considered. You know, things like that. So she just was fed up. That thing, things like that definitely do take a toll on a person. Absolutely. And then to have people that are bullying you right there in front of your face and you're already escalated, of course it's going to get more worse. Right, right. But it's just a sad feel, situation yeah, all, all around. around. Yeah. Okay, move it along. So uh, a sergeant in South Carolina was recorded harassing a young man by the name of DeAndre for just being in his neighborhood. Now I don't know this story, I haven't really been uh, following the news and really been on Facebook or social media, but uh, we posted the video, can you go into detail about what was going on? Well from the video, uh, he was just walking around, like maybe just walking, getting some exercise, fresh air. And this man and his wife started recording him, telling my son, get out, you know, you're in the wrong neighborhood and all this other stuff, just harassing the boy. And the dude pushes him, knocks his phone out of his hand and breaks it. And the dude's like, you came up to me. You came up to me. I'm walking around. I live here. And they ask him for his address and stuff. And he says, well, how long you live here? And it's like another trip. Hey, but the, it's funny. He's like, he's like, what's your address? And he's like, well, I'm not going to give you that. He said, well, um... Where how long have you lived here? And he's like, ah, oh, that's none of your business. But you think he's supposed to tell you his address and let you walk him home? But after the video went viral, basically a bunch of black people went to the neighborhood and started walking up and down the area. The the, the sergeant and his wife moved out because they were staying outside. Oh, right. How long ago was this? This was the like a uh, couple weeks ago. Two weeks ago. They, yep, they <laughs> that's moved what they out. get. They aren't supposed to ask nobody, who are you? It's none of your business. I don't care if your neighborhood is like, all white. Are you? We have a right. That's what I mean. That's why I don't care for white people. Because they treat us like we're not even human. You don't have no business asking him nothing. I see white people walk up and down the street all the time. I'm not going to go out there and ask him, where do you live? You look suspicious. Even though when I put something in the dumpster, the white people came and stole it. You know, but hey, I don't appreciate that. That stuff is just rude. That's something that happened back in the 1920s. But we people don't supposed to do that. That was I mean, I've, ne I've never cared. To, I see somebody walking outside or standing outside. I've never thought. Yeah, I've never been curious. I've never done that. I've never and been concerned. And it drives me crazy because it's like, who do they think If they you live in a nice neighborhood, well, y'all know what a nice neighborhood is considered to be, you know, not the ghetto. But I mean, not a lot of black people. I want to say that because there's a lot of black people that live in nice, nice neighborhoods. neighborhoods. It's just it's not a, what you would consider poverty. That kind of area is what would be considered ghetto, brother. Would your I see white. a lot of white poor people living in the ghetto. Yeah, so that's why I mean, like, race shouldn't play a factor in it. It shouldn't. No. But like, I feel like you and I and mom have a great income, mm -hmm. a really good income. And we live in a nice neighborhood, I would think. Yeah, we live in a nice neighborhood. But it's crazy to me that people think, just because you're black, that you can't afford to live in a certain area. You know how- That is weird. Yeah, like black people are the most educated. Or if you get a drive a nice car, how did you afford this yeah. car? Yeah, like if you, if you look back in history before it was changed, Mostly everything that was invented was by a by black, black person. Yes. Until it was, you know, somebody else may have altered it a little bit and then it's like they, how, how about they the white the people thing. stole it? Yes, then it's like they formed the whole damn thing and then it's you know, erased from history. Mm -hmm. No, like we're very educated. Mm -hmm. And we do like to live in nice neighborhoods sometimes. You know sometimes. I, I actually like to all the time. Yeah, the ghetto's getting, getting, getting a little rough. More, I, I, maybe if I could walk, I wouldn't mind, but the ghetto get a little rough for me. Yeah. I would say, but I would say when we did live in, um, what may be considered poverty, people were really friendly. Yeah, they were. they were. They weren't nosy. Yep. 
They had good people, intentions. Everybody like got along and we would look out for each other. Yeah, they had good intentions. And I would say in the area that we live in now, people are nosy. Yeah. Nosy, nosy. nosy. And you know what? They only being nosy because we bought the only black family on kind of over block. here. On this block. Yeah, because it's like we can't take out the trash without the neighbor opening up her door and watching. Watch yeah, you know, so, we're taking our yeah. And, okay. and you know so, what I've noticed since we've been here, they argue more than in the ghetto. Yeah, yeah, they be yeah. outside having birthday parties, <laughs> fighting and screaming and hollering. We was chilling, get, chilling. getting <laughs> their cars towed for repossession and stuff like that. It's just been a hot ass mess. But what I would basically the same thing that goes on in every neighborhood, <laughs> but only black people seem to, or people of color seem to be looked down on for that kind of stuff. But it, we know from proof from living in this area that it happens yeah. everywhere. And what I love is that it did. This situation did not turn into a Trayvon Martin situation because yeah. mm -hmm. it definitely could have gone that way. But, but I'm beginning to think that black people really are tired. I mean, if with the Facebook and all, if you in a situation like they came up just to help the guy, you know. I like that, you know, and I think we should. If we can help somebody, then look out for each other. Yeah, I think we should do the best we I can. I totally agree. This is what I mean about change the narrative, like the situation with the, the Micaiah Bryant. If the adults had took the initiative to be like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, don't come at her like this. We all need to respect each other. This could have been solved without the police even being involved. And then going back to that story, what's crazy is it was about the, keeping the house clean. Like, I'm sure that one girl did not cause for the whole house to be dirty. Yeah. And why everybody else can't clean up? Why was she? Yeah. Have, they probably tried to use her for her to do all the work. Mm -hmm. That's you know? very, very sad. But, but they, you know what? Them women that did that to her, they gonna not be able to sleep. They ain't gonna say nothing to nobody. That's gonna bother them mm -hmm. because it's their fault, and they should have tried to help her. And I remember when I was in uh, high school, which a lot of people that in Omaha probably will remember this story. But there was a fight down the street from South High School at Burger King. Oh, and, and uh, yeah, nobody stopped it. And the girl that having an asthma attack during the fight, and the girl she that was in the newspaper. yeah, the girl that she was fighting with, like didn't stop. Just kept going at her and then she ended up passing away so that that kind of stuff it's it it needs off to stop. It's, yeah it, it needs to stop horrific it's terrible and then the young lady wasn't even charged yeah, yeah. they looked at it as just, i didn't like that they looked at it as just two teenagers fighting and then the girl still happened to have an ass attack because she was really the victim she didn't start the fight mm -hmm. she didn't she didn't you know and to get the, the fight she tried to walk away and the girl attacked her mm -hmm. so stuff like that is it's that it was that girl try was murdered. To me, even that girl was a bully. Yeah, even when you try to do good and walk away in certain situations, it's Other still making up. Yes, yes. Having a terrible, you know, end result. This is why, why it, 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 something needs to be done. Because obviously, that. she was raised to not engage in a fight with walking away. And she tried to walk And she away. tried to still end up losing her life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's kind of like, but damn. you know what? That's why you need bullets, I swear. Because people. But just, like the young lady had a knife and she ended up being killed. What? By a cop. Well, I don't know, cause me, I will probably get shot. Cause I need bullets. Cause I can't walk, and I ain't finna let nobody run over me or nobody in my. But you family. wouldn't call the cops and then go no. outside with a no. gun and try to shoot. No, no, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't hear that. No that nine one one call. It just doesn't make sense to the me. Nine she was I heard it. The nine one one call says that she out here trying to stab. But how, but how does that make sense if she's the one with the knife? Somebody else probably called the cops. Yeah, it just it doesn't, doesn't make sense. It to doesn't make sense. So uh, she had the way to knife, but trying to test mine, and she's the one with the knife. No, the cops are on their way. It just doesn't sit, sit well with me. I don't believe that. But you know, the cops the probably was the foster ways. mom that because called. Because it would have been. You, you they know, were, uh, she you know, don't put the knife to a gunfight. He could have shot her. He could have shot her. He didn't have to kill her. He shot her like four he, times. Four times in the chest. He didn't have to do all that. He could have shot her somewhere else, and then she could have just still survived. Yeah. They have to learn. Really Police officers need to learn how to shoot people that's they really need not to learn how to de escalate. Shoot. Yep. Or it's shoot de them where that's what they, they need. don't die. You know what I mean? They, no, they, they shouldn't even have to automatically go to that. They need to learn how to de escalate. But if they feel like if they trigger happy, you can always do a warning charge, shoot them where they want. It won't be life threatening. Like they, they like want to, to kill people. 
So how can your conscience allow you to? You know what? A lot of people don't say nothing, but I know their conscience got to eat them up. I know it, it, it has to. It has to. Shit, if I tell my daughter, no is something that I really could prefer. I damn near couldn't care. I know I couldn't kill somebody and that not be on my conscience. Right. Yeah, I, I, I just, it's sad. It's Unless sad. someone is trying to kill me yeah. or someone in my family, that's the only, the only way. But I just can walk around just pow, pow, pow. But I'm yeah. telling them they look out for bullies nowadays. They look mm -hmm. out for the bullies. I've seen it happen too many times. We can't tell you this and we can't tell you that back in the day, the parents could talk to the parents and the kids. Nowadays, mm -mm. Nope. All right, moving along. So, Derek Ch Chavin, don't correct me, I don't get that man no respect. You don't, we don't uh, have to say his name. Off, he, the officer that was found guilty for murdering George Floyd. He was found guilty on uh, second degree murder, third degree, and second degree manslaughter. It's about time. About goddamn time. Be, but you know what? I think that happened, to be honest. Because just like Tupac said, we was going to burn this place down. Because ain't no way you're supposed to be doing nobody like that. And he was, to me, he was proud to be on that man's neck. Yeah, like he that. was. You know, and then people, the police officers didn't get you off. The more people said they, get off of him, the more, more he dug his The knee more he did it. Yeah, so that's, that's a blessing. That really is. But we would have burnt this month. I would have even went and started Man, some Jim fires. Brown was I would have went and places and started fires if they wouldn't have found him guilty because that, that shit's just wrong. But we still have to wait for um, sentencing. And so. then the sad thing, I quit watching it because to me, all the witnesses, they were trying to make them like they were guilty of doing something. Mm -hmm. There's some criminals. Mm -hmm. And that's what I didn't understand about the whole trial is they didn't admit any evidence of the previous of the cops' previous history they of did brutality, Floyd. but they mm -hmm. went through all the joys for mm -hmm. George Floyd's criminal history, which made no sense to me. What the hell does that? And then, if you think about it, when they went through his history, he always thought they was gonna kill him. Every time they pull him, out, I don't want to. I don't want to die. He wasn't violent. I don't want to die. I don't want you to kill me. And you know that's so common because you watch a lot of videos like the. Um, the army guy, the sergeant that got pulled up, he was saying He was very, like but he was also very cooperative. All he like, said was, what's, what's going, going on? on? Yeah. Like and nowadays, if you see the cop, it's, it's more, it's not a relief feeling. It's more fair now mm -hmm. when you see a police officer. There are black officers that say that they get scared when a cop mm -hmm. gets behind them because they know that it doesn't matter if they see them in uniform, if they, mm -hmm. All they need to know is that they black and they scared. It's, it's an awful, awful It feeling. is an awful And then, um, like, I was listening to The Breakfast Club and Master P was on him yesterday. And uh, he made a good point and I always say this, but I'm also um, not blind to the truth. But the black community gets very upset. He, his point was, we get upset by another race Kill the black person, but when we fight against each other, no one, no one is upset. I'm upset about us fighting against each other. I I agree because it's always like police brutality is definitely wrong, but Another Michael killing Pookie kill. is yeah, also wrong. wrong. You know what I mean? But the problem, the reason why people are more outraged about uh, and I already want to be charged. When is when yeah, when black people kill other black people or do crimes against other black people, the book is thrown at them. They're gonna get not faced. all the time. There's Most a lot of, of cases time. in Omaha that I know people know who killed somebody. But that's because and they will never, they will never stand up to it. But I bet you the same people on Facebook probably posting this cop wrong for killing so and so. Or they probably the same person that's saying, uh, probably saying, free my homeboy, smoky smoke, you know. But they won't come forward to say so and so murdered somebody. That's a community problem, but and for the most part, most of these people are found and found guilty. Of course it's a community problem. Just like police brutality affects our community, us killing one another affects our community. Change just has to happen. It just has to happen. And I also feel like the, a, a good, good way of doing things is to educate your children 
let them know that there's more to life than, you know, if you are living in poverty. Let them know there's more to life than that. You don't have to be violent to get your point across. And wrong is wrong no matter what race you are. You know, um, take accountability. That are, that's all that I think the thing is, is about is accountability. We want people to be held accountable for the shit that they do. Yeah. Just like, uh, not calling I'll never say anybody's name, but I have a friend whose sister was murdered. And I know somebody that knows that, knows the killer of her sister and haven't came forward with anything. So well, and everybody is black. I'm just going to say this. Don't let me find out the doctor. Yeah, I'm a snitch. Come at, I'll tell you. Come at me. If Murder, I know something, I'm saying. you kill somebody and they're not trying to you when you're, you're that's wrong. wrong. I can say something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah but when you kill crazy, somebody, so. that's that's wrong. I don't care if you kill somebody. Yeah, I'm not. White, I don't black, defend or, nobody. And you know, they what, what, um, and you know what? So, like, if I have a close friend or a child that's murdered, whether it's by a cop, or, or another black else. person, I'm, my feelings is gonna be the same. Yeah, that is going Hurt. to kill me. Hurt, kill me. So to me, it, it's it's all the same. No matter what, we are diminishing our black community. You got brothers against brothers, sisters against sisters, brothers against sisters, cousins, cousins against cousins. But you know what? That stuff is in it's the crazy. Bible, and I hate to say that I'm not against anyone in my family. But I will stay away from you. Once you have got me, that's better than harming somebody. To so far, that's better than I will, I will, oh, I hate I will you so much. I'm gonna come shoot up your house. I will like, never. Do I, that. I, I, I would never do that to my worst enemy. I don't want to hurt nobody, even if I don't like you. I don't want to hurt you. Yep, my feelings are going to be the same. And I never understood that about a lot of people in the community. Why is always your result? I want to hurt you. I want to kill you. Quick, look at that person. Because I just. Yeah, stay away from people. Why do you want to hurt somebody? I don't get that. And that's, men that's mental health issues. Because they think, that me staying with this person, that's not good enough. I got to take this person off the mm -hmm. earth. Why? That's mental health issues. What you need to issues. know is that is God's job. He that's put us mental here. illness. It's his job to decide when we go. That's not my job to take nobody out. I'm not going to never try to get nobody the best to trying to do something living my best life and being happy. That's how I feel. I, I, I live my best life and being happy. I just want to say, I really been. enjoyed my sisters, though. I really enjoyed Larry Teresa. Well, we went to Indiana last week. I Lavie. enjoyed them. And I'm not alone. I thought I was the only one, but I'm not alone. Okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed them. How did you feel about that trip? I had a good time. I was scared to death on the fucking highway, but Ooh, I had my last note. I, I, I know, and I apologize multiple times. Let me show you how how good. Let me see how good I am. You was irritating myself. Did I ever yell at you? No. I said no, Nisi. It's okay, Nisi. Let it out, Nisi. And what I said? <laughs> Shut up, Nisi. Nisi, quit that. <laughs> Why you just give me the evil look, Daddy? Hey, screaming made I didn't give you the. But that's I how you did it like a couple but times. But you know what I'm saying? That's how you do things. You, Instead of yelling. Yeah. You let whoever. And I wasn't trying to, like, I was just trying to get through the nail. No, trip. but that's what I'm saying. This is how you, you handle things. You have to put people sometimes ahead of yourself. And those people don't say that. Because I was like, oh, Lord, I'm driving and I don't want her to freak out, but I have to go. You know, I'm trying to keep up with traffic. I'm trying to keep up with my auntie, but I knew you were scared. So I, I, I knew how to respect you and also knew what I needed to do. That's all I'm saying. Wasn't I wasn't trying bad. to wasn't it, It's not anything nobody. bad. I think it was. It wasn't anything bad at all. How, about, how did I feel about our um, trip? It was very sad. Very sad. I am glad that we were blessed enough to have the means to go. To the funeral mm -hmm. and support my aunt Teresa. It, I was glad to see my mom and her sisters. Yeah. Very I was glad. glad to see them. Again. Like me and you kept saying, we're glad mama and her sister got to spend time together. We yeah. kept saying that. Like it, I was very. Glad it was good until it went bad. But I, I love my two older sisters. But boy, did I get cursed out on the way back home by me. <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to drive. I'm a very positive person. Me, I'm trying to drive. And she let me have it the whole way. Huh. No, I. Well, okay, <laughs> we'll get into it. Listen, everything. Not too much, though, Mama. 
borderline don't say nothing. Okay, no, okay, okay, go ahead. I I don't be mad at you. I really don't. But you so sweet, it irks the shit out of me. You so you so sweet. I don't like people talking smart to me. I don't give a damn if it's my mama, my sister, my brother. But don't talk down to me after I've been helping you this whole damn trip. And when they want to take off and leave me, it pissed me off. I told them to go. That's all of us to it. And now I know I will never take another fucking trip with them again. That's all I know. It has nothing to do with you. I apologize, Turkey. But you, all this sweetness, <laughs> some, some sourness got to get into you. I mean, I feel like she was. Some we were sourness. Always, we were gonna be good regardless. We yeah, but let me get a little background <laughs> on that. So, on the way to Indiana and on the way back, we drove two separate vehicles. And I was following my aunts, and they don't care about the speed limit. I don't care, you know. They say they drive in the they speed. They'll drive 120 miles per hour <laughs> in a 40, you know, 40 uh, lanes. Uh, so for me, I, I have my daughter, my nephew, my mom, my sister in the car, and I don't want to get put over for speeding. And I have illegal drugs. <laughs> and I wasn't gonna say that, but she did. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So I have to be very cautious. Again, me being very popular, I was thinking we came together, we should lead together, and we should arrive back in Omaha together. But with me not keeping up with them, I was coming up with traffic and doing this we speed limit. To use the restroom. Yeah, um, they they end up leaving us after the whole time. Mom saying, "Let's just go out. We got the GPS." I'm like, "No, let's stick together. That's how we're going to do things." And my mom was irritated about that. I was irritated, damn right, because nobody wanted to pull off and leave us when I was up and all that money that I didn't have to up. I didn't stay in no room with them, but I paid for their room. I split their room right on down three ways. I, I stayed in the room with y'all. I put in gas. I, I only rode in the car to Teresa's house. I just feel like if you, if we family, You know, that just then fucked me up for a long time. I probably won't talk to them for a minute. Even though Alice didn't do nothing wrong or make me upset, I won't be talking to them for a minute. I just see me up here minding my own business. Got the worst but anytime I got to go, I'm just going to say, anytime, I'm tired of going through shit. I'm old, I'm crippled, I ain't got time for no bullshit. Anytime I want to go see my sisters, I will be going on my own. I won't need nobody to go with me. Little drive. Make it Hello, Airlines. You know, I, I'll be flying. You know, but the point is, I won't need, I won't be going with nobody besides my kids and my grandkids. Right? I'm 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 Oh, like if, if she just had to get in the car, but you could. I, I, or Mari's I, I, too. But you know what? I guess I shouldn't feel bad because when Mari's drove us to Cali, you went off on him too. Whoever driving, she yeah, went off. I'm, I'm just going off. Whoever, whoever driving, she gonna go off. Everybody, she went off for everybody during the trip. Everybody <laughs> got it during the trip. Yeah. Mama hate people drive. Yeah. 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 Ye
You're not, but that's the thing. Like, you're not just mean to be mean. Like, there's things. I've been mad. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who I look at. I'll you off, you know? She has a lot of triggers. I'm going to do a safety plan for you. She's like that. What? Don't do too many safety plans because if I feel like you're trying to help me too much, you got to piss me off too. Safety plan for mama. <laughs> if I feel like you helping me, that'll make me mad. Too. You know, we have that like when someone has a trigger while I'm at work, it's like leave and you remove everybody from the environment, you talk to them to help. So you all on your own. She's, she's having a moment. Yeah. Yeah. I have a plenty of moments. It's only because nobody won't tell me what's wrong and I'm upset that I can't get wrong. I'm the youngest one. My sister is 75. Oh, they were 70 here. They oh. had they was straightening the hill, they, they was great. looking yeah. good, yeah. And, and I was <laughs> jealous. I ain't never been so jealous in my life, but I can tell you, <laughs> they look really good. They, they do. really they do, do look do. good. I was oh, so like, oh, look at Ava and Ava, she's, look at her. And they are two of the sweetest women you ever looking just like a granny. Looking just like them. But one thing they did show me that surprised me, I saw Emma with another man. It was a man she met before she met him. And Emma looked this so young. She looked you like she was about to I don't think I took that. a picture. Girl, they had a picture. And then Teresa said, that's before she met Willie. She was looking good. Mm -hmm. wow. I mean, she looked like she could have been no more than 21. Mm -hmm. I don't she really see that good. picture. I would like to see that picture. Too. I, I was snapping so many pictures, y'all. I couldn't get them all. But she I didn't even know that was, was Emma. Star. Looking like she showed it to me, she had a scarf on at the time. I was like, look at you, look just you? like yourself. <laughs> when she was young. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> I said, you ain't changed at all. She had the scarf the same way she had it on when she showed me. You gotta show her that that's hilarious. I was like, look at her, she looks exactly the same. And my, uh, uh, I didn't get a picture of Donald, but I did get a picture of a little man. And uh, hey, y'all didn't get to see Mary. Either. No, we didn't get to see Mary. But I did meet Donald's wife. She yeah, we didn't get her. She was very nice. Uh, uh, Laura, I got to meet. You know, she's very sweet. Sweet. she's very sweet. She's very sweet. She is. It was. It was sad, but it was good that I got to. See yeah, y'all family is so so small. small. So small. So yeah, I was like, it's not a lot of y'all. Yeah, that that was really good. And that's more reason for y'all to try to at least get them on. That's only a little bit. And y'all up there. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting up there. I mean, I'm but hey, they're they doing good. They walk around strutting and dancing and stuff, but I'm the only one sitting in the chair. Well, you know what I do want to say about Indiana? The way the driving. And not it? only the drive, because Alice streets. drove. Alice drove. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so not even the driving, because she ain't from Indiana. But it is very hard to find Places. a place that sells alcohol yes like you know in a lot of urban areas you can find a liquor store on every corner yeah in indiana <laughs> you cannot find a liquor uh, store on every corner yeah, they, they have the very designated areas yes the gas station sells and if you don't have a valid id you can't even enter yes because yeah. if you were going to liquor store to buy a snack you have to still present an ID to get in the store. Mm -hmm. They didn't uh, ask us that. until yeah. we went to, you know, food. Yep, and they were like, you can't make this without having an uh, ID. Shit, there wasn't nothing in there but liquor. There wasn't no snacks in there. There wasn't no but liquor. Wall to wall liquor. Oh, all I, I seen was, was walls. Oh, I, 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 I never it. seen nothing like that before. Was I was like, like wow. Liquor. Yeah, I wish I was liquor. drinking. So I, 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 I was like, if you love liquor, that was like yeah. the candy store. Yeah. Because yeah. it was like, wow, they, they have, have everything. They have ice chest that yes. we don't have here in Nebraska. Yeah. They come with cup holders on them. Yes, it was so cool. All right. Um, Before we end, it's like 745. Yeah, I'm ready. Any close out statements from me that I... You, Mom? You, Nancy? It was a great trip. Great topics, ladies. Good show. See you guys next week. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm singing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh I did want to say, y'all, about this COVID shot. Oh, oh, Lord Jesus. I got the COVID shot. <laughs> Ever since I got it, I've been tired. I, I got both of them. 
all I want to do is sleep. I don't know if it helps you or not, but I know me, all I, all I want to do is That sounds sleep. like a damn good time to me. To no, sleep? Not to sleep all day. Ruin your life and just sleep. She said ruin your life. life. It's terrible. I, I don't know if it'll help me in the long run, but I got both of my shots, and i just been tired ever since I got the first one. Not sick, but tired. Mm -hmm. Sick of being tired. All right, tired. then. She's sick of being tired. Um, I always say about, um, I ain't getting no vaccine. Yeah, I got, I I got to idea. know the motherfucking side effects. <laughs> well, side effect must be being tired because I have been tired. And I probably had COVID. Already, you might be. I was around it like constantly. Yeah, you were. Um, I don't know. I, just, I ain't, I ain't getting nothing. So I no more information. So, so you sure that your baby? Right? Oh yeah, yeah. mine. Even my daughter can't get. Especially it's supposed to be something to benefit us. Mm. No, no, no. So you a parent out there getting a shot and your kid ain't got it? Ooh, shame on you. Yeah. Shame I only got it because I thought it was gonna help, you. but it really did. It ain't helping, mama. No. <laughs> Uh, they up there strutting, I'm in the one in the wheelchair.